Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create exploded axonometric drawings in Grasshopper for Rhino. In this video we're going to be using Grasshopper as a fun way to create exploded drawings within our Rhino files. For this to work we need to split up a lot of the objects in our files into separate layers. And you can see here I've got lots of these objects just isolated by themselves which will allow me to then move them from the face of the model to create my exploded drawing. Once I've got that set up, I'm then going to open up Grasshopper in order to allow us to systematically pull away some of these faces to create our drawing. Now if you've never used Grasshopper before, that's fine for this tutorial. We're going to be using very simple functions in order to create this drawing so you don't need any prior knowledge of the software. To open up Grasshopper in Rhino, we just type in Grasshopper into our command line and it will open up a new Grasshopper window like so. To create a blank slate, we can just hit new document and that will create a blank canvas for us to work on. Now I'm going to keep my grasshopper window here and my rhino window to the left so we can see both of these as we work. Now in order to move these faces from our model, we need to use the move function in grasshopper to transform and move the faces away from one another. To do this, you can find the move tool under the transform option. We can find the move node there or you can double click on your canvas, type in move, and you can locate the move tool in there as well. Once we've made that, it will create this node here which will allow us to move certain pieces of geometry. If you're new to Grasshopper, the way this works is we have these input nodes and output nodes in order to move certain pieces of geometry. So we need to tell the node certain information to allow it to know which geometry to move and by how much. Now to start with, we're going to move this red face here away from the model. So we want to set in this geometry tab, this face to be moved. To do that, we need to use a parameter here and we're going to use this BREP option, which essentially allows us to contain a piece of our model within our Rhino file under this node. So if we click on this BREP node and just click and drag it out into our canvas, we can see here we can right click on that and we can go set one B rep. You can either do this by selecting the geometry already and clicking that, or we can deselect the geometry, right click, set one B rep, click on the geometry there, and there you can see it's kind of highlighted green now, and that tells us that it's kind of it contained within this node here. So when I click on the node, it goes green, and when you click off, you can't really see it there. So that tells us we've now captured that piece of geometry under this node. And what I'm then going to do is I'm just going to rename this wall one, like so. Once we've got that, we're then going to plug that into this little G for geometry tab under our move tool, like so. And what you'll find is it might pop up here and move slightly. Now the reason for that is under this transform tab, you can see it's already got a defined value in there of 0, 0, 10. This works on a coordinate basis, so what it's telling this move tool to do is move it in the x value 0, in the y value 0, and in the z value 10. And the z links to the kind of upward value of our model, and that's why it's moving this up 10. Now I actually want more control of this, I want to be able to kind of tweak these values. So I'm going to use what's called a slider in Grasshopper in order to tweak that value up and down to move this object in a specific direction. So we're going to create a new slider just by finding the slider under this parameters tab over here. You'll see by default it slides between 0 and 1. I want that to be a bit more. I'm currently working in meters in this my meters unit in this model. So I'm going to set this from 0 to 100 that I want it to slide to. So I'm going to right click, go to the values, for the minimum value I'll keep it at 0 and for the maximum value I'm just going to double click and set that to 100 like so. Now you'd think we could just plug this straight into that transform but you can see if I do that it's going to come up with a red warning telling us we can't actually do that, that won't work, there's a kind of error there. In order to allow this slider to control the sort of movement of the object we have to, con to convert it into a coordinate and that essentially is called a vector in our grasshopper file. Now if you want to disconnect a wire we can just hold down the control key, click and drag and it will disconnect that there like so. In order to create a vector we can click on vector 
and we're going to go to this construct point which allows us to construct a particular vector out of coordinates. Now if we click and drag this out you see we've got the x, y and the z coordinate and we can use this slider to control either one of these. Now if nothing's plugged into these, this come, these just default to the value of zero for each of them. So if we plug that into transform, you see it won't move at all because we've got a transform value of zero, zero, zero. There's nothing plugged into any of those coordinates. Now if I plug in this into the Z value and we move it up and down, you see now in my Rhino file, we can then control that coordinate of the Z value from zero all the way to 100 up here. And we can use the slider in order to do that. So that gives us control over where this moves to. Now I actually don't want this to move upwards, I want this to move out of the model, kind of this way on the face. So instead of the Z, I'm gonna plug it into the Y value. because you can see here on the green axis, that's my Y, red is my X. So we're gonna just hold control, disconnect it from the Z and connect it to the Y instead. Now you might find, as you can see here, that it's moving the opposite way to the way I want it to. It's going 0 to 100, that's going that way. I actually wanted to move to the left here. Now, there's two ways we can change this. We can either change the values here by going maximum value 0 and minimum value of minus 100, so it moves minus down there. But actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a quick maths function in order to take this positive integer, sort of 0 to 100, and make it into a negative one. The way Grasshopper works is mostly based on coordinates and maths geometry, so we can use maths functions in order to kind of tweak our numbers here and tweak the way things are moving. Now, to get this into a negative value, so instead of plus 31, I'm going to go minus 31, we can do that by going to maths, I'm going to take out a subtraction node, and then in parameters, I'm going to take out this panel node. This allows us to basically input any sort of um, data that we want into our nodes. I'm going to make that zero, like so. Plug that into A, and then we're going to plug our Y coordinate and our sort of slider here into B. What this will do is it's essentially going to minus this value from a value of zero, and that means the resulting value will be the negative of this. And then we're going to plug that into Y instead. And what you can see here, we still got the same slider, but instead it's moving in the opposite direction. Now there are many ways you can do this. The reason I'm doing it this way is because later on we're going to be using this function to allow some of our numbers to be positive and some to be negative in that way. And there we've got our face moving away. So that's how you can simply make a slider to allow yourself to move geometry away from the face. And once we've made one of these, we can start to copy them and add them to other faces. So if I copy this just by selecting all those objects, hitting Control C on my keyboard, and then Control V again to paste them, I can then right click, set another object for this piece. I'm gonna set this one this time. And you can see now, we're just gonna rename this to wall two. That is also on its own slider there, like so. Now actually this is now moving the opposite way, so we can get rid of this negative function, plug it straight into there and delete this. And that allows us to move this face, like so. So we've got one for wall one and one for wall two. Now it might be, and often this is the case when you're creating exploded drawings, that you want both of these faces to move at exactly the same distance at each time. You can see here this one is independent from this one. Actually, in order to do that, all we need to do is use the same slider to control that value. And this is a nice thing with Grasshopper, is we can actually take this first slider, and instead of using the second one, I'm just going to plug this straight into that Y value there, and delete this other slider. Now that way, you can see one slider is controlling both of those objects. You can see here, the first one is plugged into this negative function, which allows the number to be negative, which moves this wall one outwards. And this one keeps it positive, plugs straight into this vector, and then moves the wall two. So one slider controlling two pieces of geometry. And that's where this kind of tool or using Grasshopper before this becomes really powerful because it allows us to really easily start to move multiple pieces of geometry in a systematic way from one another so we can create a coherent drawing. Now one more I'm going to do is we're going to do one for this back facing wall here. Copy that down. Same thing. Reset 
that to this object here and you see it's still moving in that kind of y direction i now want it to move in the x direction so we're going to disconnect that from y plug it into x instead and you might find that it's moving in the wrong way it's kind of moving this way so we need to make it a negative function again so we'll just copy our negative function here plug that in and plug it into the x value like so now it's very simple kind of maths this and really simple functions what can often happen when you're using grasshopper is you might get all your kind of nodes and connections muddled up so it's always good to try and keep them nice and neat so you don't lose them and i always make sure i rename every component so we're very clear on which components are which and keeping them kind of separate so there we have our slider controlling all three of those walls moving outwards from one another so this is essentially the basis of how you're going to start to create this drawing in grasshopper now what we're going to do is we're also going to start to move the structure away from the walls so in order to do this we're just going to select all of these pieces that we've already made go to edit and we're going to group them together and this just allows me to create a group just for those walls so they all kind of cluster together and i don't get confused of which ones are which then we're going to start to create one for these pieces of structure and to do that let's just take the first series of nodes we made we'll copy and paste them move them down here we can disconnect our slider for now and instead of wall one we're going to call this timber one and this time instead of just setting one object we're going to set multiple objects because i want all of these bits of structure to move simultaneously so we can also do that by clicking set multiple preps and clicking selecting them all and hitting enter there so now they're all contained and you can see that the line is kind of doubled up that tells me that there are multiple bits of geometry in there instead of just one that you can see here now for these i want these to move also sort of outwards but I don't want them to move as far as the wall. Now, if we use this same slider into here, you'll see that as we move, they're just moving in exactly the same position of the wall. And what often happens with these exploded drawings is you want things to be incrementally spaced out. So actually I want this position to be half of what the position of the wall is. So we can do that just using maths functions again within Grasshopper. And this is another really useful function if you want things to be nicely spaced out. If we go to maths, this time I'm going to select the division function. We're going to take our sort of slider and we're going to divide this number by two. And what this would do, so we'll just copy this zero we've got here, relabel it for two, OK, and plug it in. And then we're going to plug that in to our negative function again. So essentially what that's doing, as you can kind of see here, is as we're moving it out, it's taking this value, putting it into this node, we're dividing that value by two, so it's moving half the distance, and then we're just negativing that value, making it into a negative number, plugging it into our y coordinate and moving it via that number as well. So all it's doing is however far the wall moves, the timber will move half the distance. And this creates a nice sort of even spacing of your geometry as you're moving it outwards as well. Now we can do that for the other side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly pause the video, do it for the other bits of structure, and we'll do it for the ceiling too. And this uses very much exactly the same function, so I'm not going to repeat it lots of times, but I just want to show you what this will look like once you do this to multiple layers of your building to create a larger exploded drawing. So I'm just going to pause the video, set up these nodes as we have done with the previous ones to create this larger exploded drawing. Now you can see that I've wired all these up. We now have multiple objects linked to this one slider. And if we sort of scale them up, we explode it outwards. And if we scale them down, we explode it back in. So we have complete control over how we incrementally explode out these objects from the face of the drawing. And this can be done by through lots and lots of objects. You want to have kind of multiple objects you're containing or controlling in this manner and just having one slider to control them so they incrementally space out from one another just using maths functions to divide whatever number you're bringing them out 
by a kind of increment of how many spaces of objects you want within there. So in order to then take that and then turn that into a drawing, you'll see that Grasshopper Geometry, we can't select it in Rhino by default. We have to do something called baking that geometry in order to bring it into our Rhino file. Now before I do this, I just made a explode layer here, which I make sure is my active layer. Then all I'm going to do is click on all these move tabs that we have which we've created our geometry for, and these are just all the final resulting geometry tabs, which have highlighted them green. Then we can go up to Solution, Bake Selected, click Enter, and you'll see that that then has kind of baked those pieces of geometry in, and we actually have them as pieces of Rhino geometry now. Then from there, I'm just gonna save out my Grasshopper function, so we have it sort of saved. So because you'll find that Grasshopper um, scripts you're using are saved differently from your Rhino file. So they won't by default save with your Rhino file. So it's always important to save it separately. Click Save and we can close that now we've used it. And there you can see we have our incrementally exploded geometry from our Rhino file there. The beauty of this is once you make it once, it's really easy then to go back and just swap out the bits of geometry you're wanting to explode. So you only really need to make the script once, then you can load it into any model and use it to explode different drawings of yours. And from here we could create a make 2D drawing, you could turn it into the sort of pen function to create a sort of pen drawing from there as well. You might want to sort of hide some of the other faces once you've exploded them so it shows it's sort of coming away from the main part of the object or however you want to display that particular piece of geometry or drawing. So thank you for watching, I hope you found this video tutorial helpful and if you want to watch any other video tutorials on creating drawings or visuals in Rhino then please do check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.